Now in this section, I'm going to walk you through the entire raft algorithm. Just to warn you, this is a rather complex and subtle algorithm. It's by far the most complex algorithm that we're going to look at, at in this course. Um, and I'm not expecting you to memorize every single line of it. It's far too much for that. But I would like you to understand the principles of how it works. Because although it's subtle, it's very instructive as a way of how to think exactly about behavior in a distributed system. So the foundational part of Raft is a kind of state machine where a node can either be a leader or a candidate or a follower. And so I'm going to first explain the state machine before we go into the code, because this is useful just to keep in mind for what is actually happening. And then we'll go into the details. So initially when a node starts up, it is in the follower state. Um, and so this could be either when it starts up for the first time or if a node crashes and restarts after it recovers, it also goes into the follower state, no matter what state it was in before. Now, eventually the system needs to have a leader. And so in order for a node to become a leader, it has to first become a candidate. And a um, node becomes a candidate if its failure detector uh, tells it that there is a suspected leader failure. So if, if it's essentially, if it hasn't heard from the leader for some period of time, there's a timeout at which point the one of the followers will say, okay, I just assume the leader is dead. I'm going to become the candidate now. And so then the when the node becomes a candidate, it asks for votes from the other nodes. And if it successfully obtains a quorum of votes from other nodes, then this candidate can become a leader. However, it could also happen that while this leader election is happening, uh, the follower hears about some other candidate with a higher term number. And if it does discover one of these, uh, one of these nodes, a different node with a higher term, then the candidate will just step back immediately and say, okay, fine, I'm going to leave the higher term to somebody else uh, and become a follower again. But what could also happen is that the candidate starts an election and it doesn't receive enough votes within some period of time, but it doesn't discover any new term either. In which case, eventually the election will time out and it will restart a new election with the same node being the candidate, uh, restart a new election with a higher term number. And hopefully the next time round, then it will be able to get uh, votes from a quorum of nodes. So now, once a, a node is leader, it remains leader uh, for potentially a very long time until either that node crashes or gets shut down for whatever reason, or if the node discovers a new term. So if the node has been happily leadering, uh, but then some other nodes on the side have decided that the leader is dead, they've run an election, they've uh, elected a new leader with a higher term, and then eventually the old leader finds out about this higher term. At the point where it finds out about the higher term, then immediately the leader just steps down to be follower. So we have a, a very peaceful transition of power in, uh, in Raft, in the Raft algorithm. Um, so that's the entire state machine for the follower, candidate, and leader states. Let's start digging into the code. So the code is spread over nine slides because there's rather a lot of it. But don't worry, I'm going to walk you through step by step and hopefully it will make sense. So first of all, we have the initialization block. And so here we set the initial values for a whole bunch of variables. I'm not going to explain those variables now. I will explain them as we uh, actually start using them in the course of the algorithm. The important thing is just that the first four variables here, that is current term, voted for, log, and commit length, the first four variables have to be stored in stable storage. So they have to be on disk. And whenever uh, a node updates one of these variables, it has to write that update to disk before it does anything else, before replying to any messages or so. Um, this is important for the crash recovery purposes of the algorithm. On the other hand, the, the later variables here, so the ones that are not the first four, they uh, can be just in RAM, they can be in volatile memory, and so they, their contents will be lost if a node crashes. And then indeed, if a node crashes, then we have this block here, which resets them to their initial state. So you can see, for example, that after crash, after a crash and we recover, we go back into the follower state uh, and so on. Now, the most interesting of these variables is probably the log. 
And so actually, you know, first the current term. So the current term, as I said earlier, is, is just an integer, uh, which gets incremented every time a leader election happens. Okay, uh, voted for is to ensure that a vote only, lead, only votes once per term. So to ensure that uh, within a particular term, a, vote, uh, a node can only vote once. Um, then the log is what is interesting. So the log is an array, uh, or it's a sequence of values, uh, of sequence of entries. Every entry in the log consists of two things. It consists of a message that we want to deliver via total of the broadcast. So that's our, our value that we are deciding on. And it also the entry also contains the term, which was the term of the leader at the time that we broadcast this particular message. So those are the two pieces of information that we have for each entry in the log. And so the log is now just going to be, think of it as an array that starts with uh, log square brackets zero, and it has a certain length. And the order of entries in this array is going to be the order in which messages get delivered by total order broadcast. So what we want to ensure is that all nodes have a copy of the same log. Now, there can always be a little bit of uncertainty around the last few, the most recent few log entries. And so what we have is this concept of a commit. And so uh, a certain prefix of the log, so the log from the start up to a certain point will be committed. And that means once that section of the log has been committed, those entries in the log are not going to change anymore. So after a log entry has been committed, we know that everything up to that point is safe to be delivered via total order broadcast. But any entries in the log after the commit point, they are still a bit uncertain. And so we, are, we can't deliver those quite yet. Okay, so that's the principle of the log. And the commit length tells us how far we have committed along this log, but we'll get to the commit length later. So let's start with the first leader election. So if a node with ID, node ID, suspects that the leader has failed, or if that node was previously a candidate and it started an election, but it didn't get enough votes within the election timeout, then the node executes this code here. So first of all, the node increments its current term, as I said, the node transitions into the candidate state and the node votes for itself. You know, like in any good election, of course, everybody votes for themselves. So here the node is going to set its own voted for variable to itself and for the set of votes that it's received, it's immediately going to put itself into that set. Uh, it's going to set last term here, uh, initially zero, but if our log is non-empty, then this last term variable will be the term of the last entry in the log. So the log here is zero based index, so log.length minus one is the index of the last element in the log, just like with an array in most programming languages and the dot term property, that's the term in which that last log entry was added to the log. And so this variable here, uh, last term, and all of the other things get packed into a message, and that message is sent to all of the other node. And so this message is called a vote request message. So this is the leader asking the other nodes to please vote for it. Uh, sorry, this is the candidate, uh, the candidate asking uh, whether the other nodes will vote for it to become the new leader. Um, and so in, included in this vote request message is the ID of the candidate, which is node ID. It's the current term of the candidate, which we just incremented, the length of the log that the candidate has, and the term of the last entry in the log. And so this will get sent to all of the other nodes, and then the, no, uh, the candidate starts a timer which is just so that eventually if it doesn't receive enough votes, then it can restart the election. Okay, so that's starting the election. Oh, here's at the top is a little diagram of what the log looks like. So we've got uh, each log entry has uh, a message and a term property. Um, so next is what happens to a node that receives one of these vote requests messages. Okay, so we're now on some different node. It receives a vote request with a certain candidate ID, candidate term, candidate log length, and candidate log term, the term of the last log entry. And node ID is now the recipient of this message. So now, first of all, the recipient is going to check if its local log is consistent with what the, what the candidate says. 
And so what we're going to look at is the the recipient of this message is going to look at its own log and look at the last entry in that log and look at the term of the last entry. That's going to be my log term. Now, if the candidate has a last log entry with a higher term than our own term, then the log is okay. Alternatively, if the candidate has the same term on the last log entry, but the candidate's log length, the length of the candidate's log is at least as long as our own log, then the log is also okay. However, if the candidate has a shorter log, for example, or the candidate's log term is lower, in that case, we will not accept that uh, log. And so the purpose of this is to ensure that the candidate has an up-to-date log because we don't want to vote for a candidate that has a really outdated log because that might cause us to violate the property of our algorithm that once a message has been committed, it is uh, not going to change anymore. So in order to make sure that uh, committed messages don't change, we have to ensure that, uh, that we vote only for candidates whose log is sufficiently up-to-date. And this is the check of whether the log is up-to-date. The other thing we have to ensure is to make sure that we don't vote for more than one candidate in a given term. And this is what this condition here does. So if the candidate's term is greater than our own term, then it's fine. Or if the candidate's term is equal to our own term, but uh, the value of the voted for variable is either the candidate that we are being asked to vote for, or we have not voted previously in the current term, which is indicated by the value null. So in this case, we, the term is also okay. But if the candidate's term is lower than the current term, it's definitely not okay. So we've checked if the log is okay, if the candidate log is okay, and the candidate term is okay. If both of those are okay, then we are going to vote in favor of the candidate. And the way we're going to do that is, first of all, we're going to update our current term to be the term of the candidate. We're going to update our own role to be a follower. We're going to say that we voted for the candidate and we're going to send a vote response message back to the candidate with this last field being true. So this last true means, yes, we are voting in favor of you as candidate. And we include the, the node that is voting and we include the current term in this message as well so that the recipient knows which, which term we're talking about. However, if the log is not okay or if the term is not okay, then we send a vote response message with a value of false. And this false here just means that uh, we are not voting in favor of this particular candidate. Okay, so now we're back on the candidate side. And on the candidate side, we need to look at uh, handling those vote responses. So first of all, we're going to look at the term in, uh, in this message, in the vote response message. So we get a vote response message containing a certain term. So if that term is greater than the candidate's term, then remember the state transition diagram earlier, this means that we're going to transition back to follower state and we're just going to let the other candidate do its election. So in this case here, we update our current term to be the, the higher term. We transition to follower state, we forget what we voted for in the previous term and we cancel our own election. Uh, if this term is less, then our current term, we just ignore the message. But if the term is equal to the current term, and if we are in the candidate state, and if the, um, if the voter voted in favor of us, so if this granted field here, if that is set to true, if all of those are the case, then we have a successful vote in this particular election. And so what we're going to do is we have this set here of votes that we've received, and we're going to add the ID of the voter who's voted in favor of us to that set. Note that this is an idempotent operation. So if that vote got duplicated for some reason, we're not going to count the same voter twice. So we're only going to count the unique nodes that have voted in favor of a certain candidate. We're not going to count how many times they voted if it's more than once. So now we have this set of votes. And if this is a quorum, then we can transition to leader state. So we define here a quorum to be a majority quorum, which means we take the number of nodes that we have in the system, add one, divide by two, round up. That gives us the minimum number of votes that we need in order to have a quorum. So in order to, for this vote, uh, this lead election to be successful. So if we have that number of votes, then we can transition into leader state 
we can say that the current leader is ourselves. We can cancel the election because we're done now. We've got sufficient votes. And now we're going to initialize some state that is needed for the leader. So what the leader needs to do is it needs to set these variables here, sent length and act length. Uh, and these map a, a node ID to an integer. And so the initial value for these maps here is going to be that for each follower in the system, we set the initial value for that in the set length uh, object, we set the current value to be the current length of the log and we set the act length to be zero. So the meaning of these two things is sent length is the length of the log since the beginning of the log that we think we have sent to this particular follower. And act length is the length of the log counted from the beginning of the log of uh, entries that have been acknowledged by the follower as having been received. And so the distinction between these two will become la important later. For now, just take them as some variables here. And finally, we call this replicate log function here, which is discussed on a later slide. And the purpose of this replicate log function right now is just to send an in initial message to all of the followers saying, hey, I'm your new leader. Uh, please accept me as your leader. Okay, so this is what the, uh, what the node does on transitioning to leader. Now, we also need to look at now what happens if a node wants to broadcast a message via total order broadcast. So that's after all what we're here for, but the whole purpose of this exercise is to implement total order broadcast. And uh, this is what this first uh, block here does. So if we want to broadcast the message MSG here at some node, well, first of all, it depends if this node is actually the leader or not. So if it's not the leader, then we just forward the request to the current leader. What the leader does if it wants to broadcast a message is, well, first of all, it appends an entry to its log. So the entry, as I said earlier, consists of the message that we want to deliver and the current term of the leader at the time when this message is broadcast. So simply appending the message to the log is essentially the act of broadcasting that message. Now we need to tell all of the followers about this message that, have, that we've added to the log. And so uh, first of all, we're going to update this act length variable here, which is just to say that node ID is just the leader itself. So the leader itself acknowledges that it has received this log. This is just something in order to make the quorums work later. And then for each of the followers, which is just each node except to the leader itself, we again call this replicate log function, which I will come to on the next slide. So the replicate log function then does the actual work of taking the new entry in the log and distributing it to all of the followers. So in addition to this, we also call this replicate log function periodically. So we can just have a background timer on the leader. And as long as this node is the leader, it's just going to periodically call this replicate log function once for each follower. And the reason for this is several fold. So first of all, it's going to uh, do this as a kind of heartbeat. So as a way of letting the followers know that the leader is still alive. Because every time you call this replicate log function, as you see, it's going to send a message to that follower. And the follower can just sit there and see like, oh, am I getting messages? As long as it's getting regular messages from the leader, then everything is fine. It doesn't need to start any new election. Um, Another purpose of um, sending this, uh, of calling this replicate log function periodically is that some messages might be lost in the network and we still want every log entry to end up on every follower. And so therefore uh, calling this periodically will also retransmit any lost messages if necessary. Okay, so uh, finally the, the reason for calling replicate log um, repeatedly is also for the commit purposes, but we'll come to the committing of log entries later. So let's have a look at this replicate log function here. So this has two arguments, the ID of the leader and the follower. And what we want to do is we want to send to the follower any log entries that the follower doesn't already have. And so remember we have this variable here, the sent length, which for each follower tells us the number of log entries counted from the beginning of the log that we think we have already sent to that particular uh, follower. And so I'm just going to call that i, and now I'm going to take a suffix of the log 
So I'm going to start at index i in the log and take all of the log entries from i onwards up until the end of the log. So log.length minus one is just the last entry in the log. And so this might be empty. So if uh, the send length for the follower idea is actually equal to the log length, in which case, uh, in that case, then entries will just be an empty array. Uh, but it could be one log entry, it could be more than one entry, log entry as well. So these are the log entries that we're going to send to the follower. Um, the other thing we need to do is now look at the last log entry just before this suffix that we're sending to the follower. So that's the i minus oneth entry, and we're going to get its term. And we're going to need that later to do a consistency check on the logs. So now we're going to send a log request message to the follower. And this message is going to contain a whole bunch of things. So it's going to contain the this entries, so the new entries, log entries that we want to send to the follower. It's going to contain the ID of the leader. It's going to contain the leader's current term. It's going to contain i, which if you remember here is the, um, the length uh, prefix that we think we have sent the this follower previously. We've got the log term of the last uh, the last log entry in this prefix. And finally, the value of the commit length variable, which will become useful later when we are dealing with commits of log entries. So all of that gets packaged into a message and that gets sent to the follower. Now we are on the follower and we're going to look at what happens when we receive one of those log request messages. So it has exactly those fields that we just talked about. The follower node is now going to be node ID. And as usual, the first thing we're going to do is check the term. So if the term of the log request is greater than the current term of the follower, then we're going to update our current term. So we're always going to move to newer terms. And if we move to a newer term, we're going to forget about who we voted for in the previous term. And then we need to check the consistency of the log. So the follower may or may not accept these log entries from the leader, depending on what the state of the follower's own log is. Because it could be that, for example, the follower missed a whole bunch of messages because it was offline for a while. And so it might have a gap in the log. So it could be that the the, the leader has some, some log, but there's a gap between uh, the end of the, um, the prefix that the leader had earlier and the message that the leader is trying to send to the follower. And so we have to detect if that kind of gap has occurred. So first of all, remember this log length here, which is one of the fields in the message. This log length is the length of the prefix on the leader that uh, after which we've sent the suffix, which is the entries. So we've got the whole log it consists of a prefix that we're not sending, and then the last few entries, which is a suffix, which we are sending. This log length is the length of the prefix that we're not sending. And so, first of all, we need to check that the follower's own log is at least as long as this prefix, because if the follower's own log is shorter, that means we have a gap in the log. So we definitely can't accept the entries because we're missing some uh, some entries. So we have to ask for those missing entries first. Um, but if our follower log is long enough, then we also have to check the terms. And so in particular, we, we require that if we look at the followers log and we look at the last entry that just precedes the new set of entries that we've been sent by the leader, we look at the term of that entry and we compare it to the equivalent term of the message that we received from the leader. What we want is for those to be the same term, because if it's the same term, then Raf guarantees that this is actually the same log entry and also that all of the log entries before that point are the same. So this is a very nice property to have. If these terms are the same, we can guarantee actually that the logs are consistent up to this point log length here. And so if this is the case, then the log is okay. Uh, but if the log is not okay, then we're going to send a message back to the leader saying, hey, you need to give me some earlier log entries because we've got a gap or we've got an inconsistency in the logs. So now if the follower's term equals the leader's term, and if the log is okay, according to this rule here, then, well, we will stay in the follower role. We will accept the the leader is just sending us entries as our leader. And we will call this append entries function here 
in order to take the the append the, the entries that we've been just sent by the by the leader and to add them to the followers log. And so I'll come to that append entries in a moment. Um, then we need to acknowledge back to the leader that we have received these log entries. So we're going to compute the length of the log. So all of the prefix plus the length of the entries, the suffix that we've been sent, that's the whole length that we are now acknowledging. So we're acknowledging we've received the entire log up to a certain length, and that's this variable ack here. And then we're going to send back this message, a log response message, back to the leader. And the log response is going to contain the ID of the follower that is responding, the current term in which this is happening, the acknowledgement, which is the, the length of how, how long of the log we are acknowledging, and true means that it's all okay. We are acknowledging that this log is fine. On the other hand, if the log was not okay, or if the term was a mismatch, then we're going to send back a log response message in which this last field is false. We're going to send that back to the leader. And so that way the leader is going to know that, oh, we've got a problem with the log here. So that is the whole logic for the follower receiving the log request from the leader, except for the append entries function. So I will go to that function next. So the pur purpose of this function is to update the follower's log from the entries that is received from the leader. And the first thing we have to do is to check whether those two logs are consistent with each other. So here, uh, first of all, in the case where we've received at least one entry from the leader, and uh, where the follower's log is long enough that it overlaps with uh, those entries received from the leader, we're going to actually compare the term of the first entry that we got from the leader. And we're going to compare that to the corresponding log entry on the follower. So this, is, this should be the same term if the logs are consistent with each other, but it could be that the terms are different because, for example, maybe the follower saw some updates from a different leader that then crashed and then was superseded by a new leader. And so for that reason, it could be that the, that the two nodes have some log entries that are not the same, that have different terms. And so that's why we're going to compare these terms. And if it turns out that these terms for the, for the same log entry are different, then we're going to truncate the log. So truncating the log means we're going to cut off all of the log entries on the follower that are after the length log length. So we're going to take the first log length entries from zero up to log length minus one. And that's, those log entries are staying unchanged, but everything after that point we're cutting off and just forgetting about it. And Raft guarantees that any, uh, any log entries that are discarded here will not yet be committed. And so therefore it's fine for us to discard those and replace them with new log entries. So here we have truncated the log. Next, we want to append any new entries to the log, but it might be that there are duplicates here. So there might be that our log already contains some of the entries that the leader has sent us because of a message retry message duplication. So we have to make this item potent. And the way we do that is we look, well, if the log length plus the new entries of the length indicates that there are some log records that we don't yet have in our own log, then we're going to go through those those um, additional uh, log entries that are beyond our existing log length and up to the end of the log entries. And each of those we're just going to append to the follower's log. Now, after we've done that, there comes the commit. So here, the leader commit here is a integer variable that we were sent by the leader telling us how many log entries counted from the start of the log are ready to be committed. And this starts off as zero because no, no log entries are committed initially. And then some log entries are added. And then sometime later, the commit length moves forward when those log entries are ready to be committed. And to be committed here means we can actually deliver them to the application via total order broadcast. So at this point, these uh, log entries are final and they're not going to change anymore. So they're safe to be delivered. And so here, we look at this leader commit value that we've been sent uh, by the leader and we compare it to the follower's local commit length va uh, value, value. And if the leader commit is greater, that means we have new records that are ready to be committed. And to commit them here just means we're going to deliver each of those log entries, the message 
We're going to deliver that to the application and then we're going to move the follower's commit length forward to match with the leader's commit length. Okay, so that's actually everything from the follower's point of view. Now we just need to go back to the leader and actually deal with this committing business. So remember the followers send log response messages back to the leader and now the leader has to receive those log response messages. And so it's going to receive a log response from a certain follower in a certain term, acknowledging the receipt of a certain length of the log and the success field will be either true or false depending on whether the logs were consistent or not. And so this is the leader receiving this message. As usual, we first check the term first. So if the term in the message is lower than our current term, we just ignore the message. If the term is greater than our current term, that means, oh, there's a new leader on uh, in the system. So we're going to step down to follower and we're going to update our current term. And here the interesting case is where the term equals our current term, the term in the message equals our current term, and we are in the leader role. And in that case, we're going to look at the success field and either see is it false or true. So if it's true, that means the follower has accepted these log entries. It's added these log entries to its own log. It's acknowledging receipt of those. And remember this ACK field here is now an integer that tells us the number of log entries from the beginning of the log that uh, have been received by the follower. And now this variable sent length and act length, they're both going to be updated to this value ACK. And we will see in a minute how these, uh, these values are used when we look at the commit log entries function. So that's the commit log entries will be on the next slide. So that is the case when uh, this is a successful response from the follower. If it's not a successful response from the follower, well, that means in this case that the logs were inconsistent with each other or the, there was a gap uh, in, the, in the follower's log. So what the follower now is saying is, please give me some of the earlier bits of the log so that I can fill in my gap and fix my inconsistency in the log. And so for that reason here, we're just going to uh, decrement the set sent length uh, variable for this particular follower. We're just going to reduce it by one and we're going to replicate the log again. So we're going to retry. And what this is just going to do is, earlier we have this suffix of the log that we sent as the list of entries to the follower. And we're going to make this suffix bigger by one now. So we're just going to start one entry earlier in the log and send those extra, send that extra entry to the follower. And if that doesn't work, we might have to go around this loop a couple of times until we filled in the whole gap between the follower's log and the, the leader's log. But eventually, as you go back one by one, you will reach the point where the, the follower and the leader are consistent, which may be right at the beginning of the log. And so this here is the uh, handling the case where the, uh, where the follower is saying we have a problem with the log. So here the leader is now actively filling in this gap in the follower's log. So the last thing we need to look at now is this commit log entries function. And remember what I said earlier was that a leader can commit a log entry once it has been acknowledged by a quorum of nodes. So again, for um, this delivery of a, of a message uh, in total order broadcast to be safe, we require it to have been acknowledged uh, by a quorum first before we can deliver it. And this logic is done is implemented by this function here. So first of all, we have this little helper function X, which given a set of nodes, it looks at the act, act length variable of the current node. And it tells us how many nodes have an act length that is greater than or equal to some integer length. So this is saying, given some length prefix of the log, how many of the nodes have acknowledged the log up to that point or later. Okay, so this gives us back a number, a number of nodes. And what we're now going to do here when we want to commit the log entries is we're going to look at all the possible lengths of the log. So from one up to the whole length of the log. And for each of those lengths, we're going to find the lengths for which the number of acknowledgements is greater than or equal to the minimum number of acknowledgements that we need. So the minimum number of acknowledgements is again, a majority quorum like before, 
more than half of the nodes. And so here, this now gives us the set of all prefix lengths that are safe to be committed because they have been acknowledged, but by at least a quorum. And if this is a non-empty set, that means that there's at least one, uh, one log entry that is ready to be committed, then this set has a maximum, and that is the latest log entry that is ready to be committed. So if this latest log entry that's ready to be committed is greater than the current value of our uh, commit length variable, that means there are now new log records that are ready to be committed. And if this is the case, and we need one extra consistency check, which is if we look at the index of the last um, the last log record, the last log entry to be committed, its term must match the current term. So this means we can't just commit a previous leader's uh, log entries. We have to add at least one log entry of our own. The leader has to add at least one log entry of, of its own to the log before it can actually commit anything. So if all of those things are satisfied, now we can commit the log entries. And so we're going to just loop over those log entries and we're going to deliver each of them to the application. So this is delivering it to the application on the leader node. And then we're going to update the commit length variable to be this the maximum length up to which it's safe to commit. And this has no effect immediately, but the next time we send a log request message from the leader to the followers, the value of this commit length variable will be included in that message. And that will then tell the followers up to which point they can commit and they can deliver messages to the application. And that gives us total order broadcast. It gives us total order broadcast in a way that is fault tolerant. So it still works as long as a quorum of nodes is alive and able to respond to requests. And it is safe. So even if weird timing behavior happens, you know, you might get a couple of lead elections, it might take a while, but the algorithm always guarantees that the, all of the nodes will deliver the same sequence of messages in the same order. And that's an amazing thing. So I hope you were able to follow that, even though it's a rather complex algorithm. It is also a very interesting one.